Hey class, so last unit, remember, was all about animals. We talked about a lot of different kind of animals and how we help them as people. How could, what can we do to help keep these animals fed and clean and safe? And also we got to learn amazing facts about all these animals. Was there anything that surprised you about the animals? Was there anything that you didn't know before that you went, oh, that's new. That completely surprised me. Well, this unit is all about things like that. What surprises us? What goes on in this world that surprises us and teaches us brand new things? So what is something from our past unit about animals that surprised you? What about the animals that burrowed under the ground to stay protected from the heat? Or what about the animals and their wings were super special and protected them from the water and the water just rolled right off? Did any of those things surprise you? That is what we're going to dive in a little bit more this unit and grow and build upon that idea of looking at the world around us and looking for those surprises, those wonders, those really great, great things that we can ask more questions about. All right. So this unit, again, is all about living and learning. We finished our animal unit with poetry. I'd like to read you a poem for this new unit and kind of tie that together, okay? So this poem is called Surprises, Surprises. Our world is a jumble of land, sky, and sea. Surprises, surprises are all around me. Boats float on water, balloons float on air. Surprises, surprises are everywhere. A lamp gives us light. And so does the sun. Surprises, surprises for everyone. We're all different sizes, round, thin, short, or tall. Surprises, surprises, some giant and some small. Summer brings sunshine, the winter brings snow. I see surprises wherever I go. Friends can be next door or far away too. Surprises, surprises for me and for you. Isn't that neat? Do you hear those rhyming words at the end of each sentence? Just like you practiced with our animal poetry. That's so nice. That was by Maureen Wong. That's a really nice poem all about surprises. All right. Brand new essential question, you guys. Brand new essential question is this. How do Earth's forces affect us? Right away, you might have some wonderful questions coming to mind. Earth's forces? What does that mean? What is a force? Does that sound familiar? We talked about forces in science. Forces, pushing, pull, anything that moves an object. So we know those words and what they mean. Earth's forces? I bet we're going to have some beautiful surprises coming up in this unit. One force I'm going to talk to you about today is gravity. What is gravity? Answer if you know. What is gravity? Go ahead. Gravity means what goes up must come down. Think about a slide. You climb up to the top of the slide. What happens when you go down the slide? Zoom, you cruise back around. Gravity is what pulls you down. What about apple? If I throw it up, it's got to come back down, right? You throw a ball. You shoot a ball up into a hoop. It bounces down and hits the ground. Gravity, okay? So that's one of the forces of earth. Gravity pulls, pulls back towards the earth. We have some new vocabulary words that you listened to and you went through those vocabulary words. Force is a new vocabulary word, but hey, you guys already know that because of science. Very good. So force is one. Um, objects is one. And how those two work together. We're going to be listening for those vocabulary words in our reading today as well. Alrighty, so we're going to be reading a story today that is called Magnets Work. Magnets Work. Can you say that? Magnets Work. Okay, and as we read this story, we're going to be going through not only listening for that essential question, seeing if we can come up with the answer for that essential question, which is what? Do you remember? How do Earth's forces affect us? Okay, so be thinking about gravity. What other kind of forces could surprise us? but we're also gonna be looking for text features. You guys played a really fun game yesterday, picking out and pulling out different things, different text features 
from um, from the little game that you would do and you'd answer the question and your little character would climb up the mountain. Was that so fun? Thumbs up if that was so fun. I think that was so fun. We'll have to do another one like that maybe again at the end of the week, okay? So we're gonna practice more. We're gonna try to figure out and pull these text features from the stories that we read for the rest of the week, all right? So as we read Magnet's work, I want you to be thinking of the different text features. All righty. So, and then go back to, if you haven't yet, will you pause this video? Go back and watch the video of Miss Thomas walking you through a review about the text features. Just in case you haven't seen it, I want you to get those into your brain so we can continue with this lesson. Alrighty, so let's begin and we're gonna read Magnet's work. So this is an expository text like we've read in the past and it's gonna give us lots of that good information that we can hold on to and keep in our brain. Alrighty, so it starts with this, the essential question, how do Earth's forces affect did you know magnets are all around you? Did you know that? That surprised me the first time I read it. Magnets help you do amazing things. Keep reading. I will. See if you think magnets have surprising uses. Hmm. I'm going to show you the picture of this girl. She's holding a magnet. Can you see that? Also in the text, I want you to scroll down if you need to see these words clearer. But look down and see these bold words. What bold words do we see? All right. Magnets pull. Look closely and you will see. Magnets can be found on a can opener. The magnet attracts or pulls the lid off of a soup can. A push or a pull is called a force. Do you remember that word? Force. Right away, let's pause real fast. Right away, looking at these pictures, scroll down if you need to, if you can look closer at the pictures and the pages. What text features do we see so far? What do we see so far? We have the title. What other things do we see? We see this girl. Is this an illustration? What is it? It's a photograph, a picture, isn't it? Let's add this to our tree map today. Okay, so get out your piece of paper, okay? And I want you to write text features at the top. Text features, okay? And from there, we're gonna start filling in this chart with the features that we see and examples that we see. So right here, I see a picture of a girl. A picture. All right, so there's one that we saw right away. Did you spot that right away too? All right, so I'm gonna keep reading to you and we go along. Be looking at these features that we see as we read along, okay? So look closely and you will see magnets can be found on a can opener. The magnet attracts or pulls the lid off of a soup can. A push or a pull is called a force, okay? There's also a magnet in the refrigerator. It pulls the metal in the door to make a tight seal. Do you know how? I wonder, that's a good wonder question. I wonder how that works. Why does it do that? A magnet's force pulls objects made of metals called iron and steel. Can you see that? Say iron and steel. Those are metals. It will not pull other things. Some, did you know that? A magnet will only pull iron and steel, metal pieces. So it will not pull wood, like a pencil, or a plastic toy. A magnet does not attract all items. So if I was to ask you, what does a magnet attract? What does it pull? What would you say? Go ahead and say it. Metal, iron, or steel. Good job. All right, the next section. Do you notice something here? What is this? What is this called? It says magnets have poles. So we're starting, it looks like we're starting a new section. Do you remember what that is called? A subheading or a heading, a subheading. Let's write that on our anchor chart. A heading or a subheading. It tells us all about what we're going to learn in the next section of the text. Good job. Turn that a little bit. There you go. Alrighty, so I'm going to read the next section to you about magnets having poles. 
and then you're going to read the rest of the story on your own and fill in the rest of our anchor chart. Okay, listen up to the next section. Magnets have poles. You have proved or shown that magnets can pull something to it. Why is this true? The two ends of a magnet are its poles. Poles. Every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. I kind of think of the earth, right? North pole up top, south pole down at the bottom. Have you ever played with trains that have magnets? Sometimes you try and put two train cars together, but they repel. They kind of push against each other. They repel each other. This means that they push away from each other. What, uh, then you turn one of the cars around and you twist it to the opposite end and the two step together quickly. That's right. If you have played with these trains, you know that is true. When the train car pushes away, two of the same poles are facing each other. However, if you put the north and south poles together, they will snap together just like that train. Isn't that neat? So you are going to scroll down and continue to read the rest of this story. And I would like you to fill in different text features that you spot that we haven't found yet. So look for three more text features. Okay, and then will you send me a photo of that in Dojo? I want to see your completed text feature and then we can go over it together tomorrow during our lesson. Wonderful, wonderful. Last thing before we go, you will see a question at the bottom and I want you to answer it. And this is based on that essential question all about the forces. Okay, and it says this, what are two ways that we use magnets? Okay, I want you to give me those two ways in your journal and send me a photo of that as well. Let me know if you have any questions at all. I look so forward to reading your responses. Have a beautiful day. Bye.